Hi everyone and welcome back to the Linux Lighthouse. If you thought user logins on Linux were all the news, think again. On OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, the way user logins and sessions are managed has changed in some pretty cool ways. Thanks to systemd logindy. Today I'm giving you a practical deep dive, how it works, what it can do, and some powerful tricks for your sysadmin toolbox, all 100% tested and working on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So whether you are a home user or running Linux at work, you are about to learn everything you need to manage logins and sessions like a pro. What you will learn in this video why Linux needed a new login service, how systemd logind.service really works, customizing user sessions with logind.conf, managing logins and sessions with login control. And of course, every command you see here actually works on Tumbleweed. Let's jump right in. You might ask, why change something that already works? Well, with systemd, Linux moved from old-school process-based login management to a modern resource-controlled approach. Systemd logind is at the heart of this. It doesn't just track who is logged in, but also creates isolated cgroup slices for each user and each session. That means better security, better resource control, and detailed tracking for every local and remote login, every seat, every terminal. If you want to see everything systemd logind does, just check the manual. The main service file is right here on the left. Let's look at the top unit section. What does it all mean? Wants equal user.slice. This makes sure every user who logs in gets their own cgroup slice. It keeps their processes isolated. Think of it as their own little sandbox. After equal name service switch dash user dash lookup dot target, the system waits until user info can be checked. This could be from slash etc pass wd, ldap, or system security service daemon, and more. Depending on your slash etc slash name service switch config file wants equal dbus.socket and after equal dbus.socket systemd logind is started automatically the first time a user logs in not at boot let's talk about how OpenSUSE tumbleweed knows where to look for user accounts passwords and group info every time you log in this is all controlled by a configuration file called slash etc slash ns switch.conf. Here is what you will usually see by default. Let's focus on the important lines, passwd, group, and shadow. So what do these entries mean? Compat. This tells the system to use the classic files in slash etc, like slash etc passwd, slash etc group, and slash etc shadow. But it also supports extra features like NIS, network information service, and things like plus minus entries for user overrides. For most setups, it just works like using the local files. Systemd. This adds support for dynamic users. Dynamic users are temporary system accounts created automatically by systemd. For example, when a service needs to run as its own user, but you don't want that user to stay on your system forever, you will never see these users in slash etc slash passwd or slash etc slash group. They are created on the fly and disappear when the service stops. Success equal merge in the group line. This tells the system to combine group results from both sources if both succeed. So it merges local groups with dynamic groups if needed. If you install and configure System Security Services Daemon or SSD for LDAP, Free IPA or 
Active Directory, you would see SSS appears in these lines, letting your system check remote directories as well as local files. On a default tumbleweed install, SSSD is not in use unless you set it up. So whenever you log in or add a user, OpenSUSE looks here first to decide where to check for user and group info, local files, dynamic users, or if configured external sources like LDAP. And that's how user authentication sources work on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Back to the service file systemdlogind.service, the service section includes exec start, restart, restart second, and so on. In plain English, capability bounding set limits what the service can do, even as root. Security directives like memory deny write execute and restrict real time make things safer. File descriptor store max and limit no file mean you can have lots of sessions open at once. Good for servers. If you want to dig deeper, check mansystemd.directives. You control user session behavior with the slash usr slash lib slash systemd slash logind.conf. We copy the file to slash etc slash systemd slash logind.conf.d to prevent overwrite open upgrade. All options are commented out by default. Uncomment any line to change the default. Here in auto VTS equals 6, number of auto virtual terminals, 6 text consoles, control alt F1 to F6, you want more, edit to 8, save, then system control restart system D login D. Now you can use F7 and F8 too. Old school Linux background jobs died when you logged out unless you used a no hub or screen. With logged ND, you control this with kill user processes, kill only users, and kill exclude users. Let's take a demo, real example. Add a new user and switch to them. Create a script in user one's home. Save and make it executable. Run it in the background. Log out, then look back in as user1. If the script is still running, numbers keep growing, background jobs are safe after log out. Want to kill user1's processes on log out? Edit slash etc slash systemd logind.conf and change kill only users equal and the username. Save the file. Restart systemd login D. As you noticed, restarting systemd login D service log out all the login sessions for all the users on the system. Now, anytime user one logs out, background processes are killed. To stop your laptop from sleeping when you close the lid, change this parameter handle lid switch to equal ignore on a graphical desktop reboot after changing this otherwise you might get logged out to shut down your machine after five minutes idle change these two parameters idle action to equal power off idle action second equal to five minutes save restart the service or reboot check the manual for more man space login d.conf Login control lets you see and manage all logins, sessions, and seats. Session, every login gets a unique numeric ID. Seat, all hardware assigned to a user. You will almost always see only seat zero. List all sessions, use login control or login control space list dash sessions. Seat zero means local physical login. SSH or remote logins, no seat. Every session has a unique ID. You want to see user details, run login control, user dash status, and the username. You want to see session details, run login control, session dash status, and the session number. To list all seats, run login control space list dash seats. To get seat hardware info, 
login control space seed dash status space and the seed number in this case seed zero to end a user's session run sudo login control terminate dash session and the session number you want to end all sessions for a user run sudo login control terminate dash user and the username there is one more useful thing you can do with login control enable lingering for a user this allows user services like podman to keep running even after you log out here is how it works enable podman socket as your user system control dash dash user enable dash dash now and podman dot socket this started the podman api socket in user mode then enable lingering for your username sudo login control enable linger and the username replace the username with your username why do this normally user services like podman stop when you log out with lingering enabled your user's background services will keep running even if you are not logged in perfect for running containers or servers as a regular user to turn it off you run sudo login control disable linger and the username you can check which users have lingering enabled by running login control list dash users lingering users will be marked with linger yes for more on login control run man login control that's a lot of ground covered Today you learned how system D login D manages users and sessions on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. The full story behind authentication, local SSSD and dynamic users. The service file and its security directives, power user settings in logind.conf, including real hands on examples, how to use login control to see control and even kick out users. If you found this video useful, hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what topic you want next. Happy hacking and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.